Okay, hi Melanie. Hi, I'm Simone Intermite. Hi, I'm so proud to talk with you today. Welcome to oh. Italy and welcome on Domani Press magazine. Well, thank you very much. It's lovely to speak to you. I would much rather be in Italy, but um, at least we get the chance to speak like this. So, your last single is titled Into You and represents a rebirth that brings you back to the dance floor. What is the genesis of, of this? Well, I was writing this song actually for the deluxe version of my self-titled album and it was in 2020, so during the pandemic and I was so determined to not write a song about my experiences at that point. I was working with Neve and Bill and Ted, some great songwriters and producers I work with and we wanted to look ahead. We wanted to look forward to better times and we took ourselves off to Ibiza in our minds mm -hmm. and we thought about being with friends, being on the dance floor in a club and that's how the song came about really. It's about self-love and about being very content with yourself and not needing a partner to make you whole it's about being whole but then having you know the being able to enjoy a partner a romance um as well as as just being very happy in your own skin so in the video clip you show half different colored outfit or do you choose your clothes to wear I work with an incredible stylist, he's called Graham Cruz, and we had a little adventure. Yeah. We started shooting some videos, and the first one we did was um, for, I think, my third single, which was In and Out of Love, and then we shot Fearless, and then it was time for Into You, and Into You was never going to be a single, but the fans loved it so much that it was, we kind of thought, you know, things are still pretty rough, you know, the world's mm -hmm. still struggling and suffering so we'll, we'll bring another single and uh, we decided to do this one and we just really share a love of fun with fashion and I think since touring with the Spice Girls in 2019 yeah. I've really embraced being sporty again so it's just really fun to you know to kind of have a little bit of sports vibe and then some quite high fashion looks as well so it was, it was cool yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, this is particularly difficult time uh, when the normality of all uh, of us has changed. Uh, how do you like this moment? Uh, how did you organize your days away from the stage? Well, I've been trying to have some structure. I think that's the only way to get mm -hmm. through. You know, we I think we're just creatures of habit, aren't we? And and personally for me, I'm I'm usually very busy. So I've been dedicating my mornings to trying to get some exercise done, you know, something physical to start my day. And then my afternoons will be more work related. So whether it's doing some writing or interviews and, um, and yeah, and creating. So, you know, try to do that Monday to Friday. And then at the weekends, just kind of relaxing a little bit, watching a bit of TV, catching up with Netflix and, um, and trying to keep my daughter entertained as well because she's so bored. Who do you prefer on Netflix? There is a, a film that you prefer or not? <laughs> I have just finished The Queen's Gambit, oh. which I absolutely loved. And I think because it was set in the 60s, the fashion and the makeup and um, even the, like, the, the decor and the interior design and stuff, I loved, loved to see. In the meantime, the date of your tour have been rescheduled on January 26 in Italy in 2022. Uh, and uh, what are your favorite plays in our country, in Italy? There is a, a place that you prefer. Oh my goodness, I've had so many incredible times in Italy. Of course, you know, work often will bring you to Rome oh. or to Milan. But I did so many festival bars back yeah. in the day, which would take me to like sometimes villages and little towns. So I think I've seen quite a lot of the country. I've had holidays in Capri and um, yeah, and I've been to Napoli and many, many places. I know there's still lots to explore. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I've had a real taste of Italy and I love to be there not only to work, but to holiday because, 
you guys know how to look after people. Good food, good wine, good company. So um, as soon as I can, I'll be back. <laughs> Taking a step back, your solo career starts in 19 uh, with the album of the stars. What is was the it like starting from the scratch? What were the, the biggest difficulties that you encountered? So now uh, you're um, you are famous as Melanie C, not only Sporty Spice. So, but it's difficult it was... for, for this or not. Yeah. I think I was so excited to have the opportunity to work as a solo artist. My time with the Spice Girls is amazing. We had the most incredible ride in the 90s. And then I was really ready, actually, to, to really express myself as an individual. I had the opportunity to work with lots of incredible people, songwriters, producers, and lots of people who'd worked with idols of mine. I, I worked with Rick Knowles and Marius de Vries and William Orbit and lots of people who'd worked on Madonna's Ray of Light album, which was one of, it is one of my favourite all-time albums. So mm. to be with those people creating something new was very, very exciting. And I, I didn't really Maybe because I was young, I, I wasn't scared. I was just really excited and, and, you know, enjoyed it a lot. And I think now being able to work with the Spice Girls and have a solo career is just the best thing because I love them both equally. Yes. In 2007, uh, there was a reunion of the Spice Girl with the single Headlines Friendship Never Hand. So uh, it's possible to be friends, even the difficult of the show bits or not. The <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing with the Spice Girls is, you know, we experienced something together so unique mm. and we grew up together. So in many ways, it's almost like we're a family. You know, we know each other's families really well. Parents, grandparents, mm. siblings, of course, now the children. So we have moments where we, we do have disagreements and we can fall out you know some of the relationships go through twists and turns but we will never not be in each other's lives you know we care about each other so deeply that it's um yeah it's it's a it's a family a familial kind of love and uh, and respect and frustration sometimes too <laughs> One uh, of your famous song is called uh, The Next Best Superstars. So, what do you remember of your first uh, addiction to join uh, to the Spice Girl group? What are the characteristics that uh, the superstars uh, cannot miss? The best characteristics. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think it's so interesting because there are so many talented people mm. out in the world with big dreams and they can be very passionate and very determined. And the, all those things are very important to become successful, but you also need luck, you know, and I very much believe in fate. And I feel like with the Spice Girls, we were meant to meet and be together and create what the Spice Girls became. Mm. So um, I think all people who have these dreams all you can do is like work really hard towards them and hope that it's written in the stars that one day you will have the opportunity to do what you love the spice girl in 19s were the symbol of now the female and light in a musical way dominated by male um what do you think about the situation today can we still talk about the gender gap in the world of music today or not um, I feel like things are improving. Mm. I think there's definitely been improvement since the 90s, but I think there's still a long way to go. Mm. We have many, many incredible female artists, but if you look a little bit behind the scenes at labels and publishing and often in the studio environment, it's still very much male dominated. And I just feel like the opportunities are there for women, but it's just, I think it's like anything, um, you know, culturally, the things we go through in history, it just takes time to kind of readdress the balance. Okay. You have declared in the past that you have been suffering from the stress and eating disorders. Uh, can the fame reach at a uh, young age cause you feel unwell? And uh, what is the success for you today? I think becoming successful very young mm. can be hard to deal with. I feel like it's personally difficult. for me, I was 
still discovering who I was as a person and I'm quite sensitive. My my personality is very sensitive and sometimes I think you can be vulnerable and that can affect you quite negatively when you have such a huge life change. Um, I spent time feeling regret because I did suffer with an eating disorder and I have suffered with depression through the years, but now I feel in some ways grateful I've had those experiences, you know, I've learned so much. It's made me who I am today. I'm much stronger. I'm more equipped to help other people who might suffer with these things too, or help them avoid it. So I think, yeah, with, with a little hindsight and moving away from the pain, you can, you can see the value in it. You know, none of this was a waste of time. Yes, the next uh, album uh, will talk about uh, the theme of the self uh, acceptance. So it's it's similar to the to the to the theme. And uh, what advice would you like to give to someone suffering from depression or from uh, eating disorder or other problems like this? My advice would always be mm. reach out. I know I felt so embarrassed and ashamed because. I didn't want anyone to know. I felt like it was a weakness. You know, people would see me as weak. And you can feel like you're the only person in the world who feels like that. But I think it is so common and so many people have these thoughts and feelings that you do not need to face it alone. And sometimes it's hard to reach out to your family or loved ones and friends. So now we have the internet and we have so many great resources, charities, people. You don't need to know this person. They can be a complete stranger, but they can help you. And professional help as well. I saw my doctor and I have speaking therapies um, every week. Um, and I, I think it's, yeah, we're all learning, I think, even more through this pandemic to take care of our mental health is just as important as taking care of our physical health. Okay, thank you. For uh, talking about the music, there is a, today a female pop star that you prefer? Well, the immediate artist that springs to mind is Billie Eilish. Oh. I am such a big fan. I adore her. I discovered her a few years ago. And then I went to see her in London, um, I think it was back in 2019, and I was shocked to find out that she's a fan of the Spice Girls, because I thought, she's so young, she wasn't even born. <laughs> um, but I was lucky enough to meet her, and I presented her an award um, last year in February at the Brits, and I've got to know her a little bit. And I just think she is so incredible. Her music is exquisite and so unique to her. She has such a mature view and outlook on the world. And she stands up for the things she believes in. She's not afraid to use her platform for good. And so I have so much respect for her. Okay. Melanie, we call it the Domani Press. And as last question, we always... Uh, uh, ask at the guest, uh, how do you see the future Melanie C and uh, uh, what are your hopes and your fears? So uh, a sentence from our virtual worlds. Okay, so the money press, I hope for the future to be so much better than it is now, but I've had an incredible career and the things I'm missing the most are traveling, seeing my fans, being on stage with my musicians and having that audience out there. So I hope that I see lots of that in the future. And I hope that the world can heal and we can get back to really enjoying life to the full. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Grazie mille. Alla prossima. <laughs> Grazie. Ciao, Melanie. Ciao, ciao, ciao. ciao. And girl, girl power forever. <laughs> yes, absolutely. People Bye. Power. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.